Well, hey folks, my name is Brad, and today I am at it once again, way up in the mountains of Vermont, looking for treasure with my metal detector. And today I was invited to what I would call the largest stacked stone complex I have ever seen. Now, the landowner asked me not to show too much of it, but check out this foundation that is right behind me. It is way over 15 feet tall, and there are structures everywhere out in this forest. These folks must have had some wealth, which is a departure from the places I usually metal detect up here in the mountains. So I cannot wait to see what we find. Now, if this is one of the first videos of mine that you've seen, I publish one of these every single Friday. So if you like what you see here today, consider hitting that subscribe button or just come on back next week. I'm gonna get the metal detector out, see what we can find. We got a very loud 84. Kinda of sounds like sheet metal, but worth it investigation here hmm. well it was sheet metal but there is a lot of other stuff going on here as you can see there is a brass what I would call a button and then on this side, we can see the other side of that brass button. And this appears to be leather on iron sheet metal. There's also something going on over here. This appears to be a rivet of some kind, maybe. So off the top of my head, this almost seems like it's a, like a lid to a satchel of some kind, although the sheet metal is a little bit confusing to me. You would think that would just be leather, but maybe the sheet metal gave it some structure. Saddlebag, maybe? The folks that lived here no doubt had multiple horses. Saddlebags would make sense. I can honestly say this is something I have never seen before, so I'm purely guessing. I was hoping that there would be a design on this brass button, but it does not appear as though there is. That's really cool and amazing that there's so much leather still intact. Pretty cool. Let me know what you think this is. I'm going with saddlebag, but I'm open to your interpretations. <laughs> Interesting. This is an extremely loud 85. Sometimes it's a 99. Maybe you can see there is water right under the leaves here. So hopefully the hole doesn't fill full of water. Oop. You know what that is. Let's see if we can get this washed off real quick. All right, does anybody out there know what this thing is? I'm sure a lot of you do. I went and washed it off in a nearby stream, and it seems like the dirt was keeping this thing all together because now that the dirt's gone, things are just coming off of it left and right. So let's take a look at it before it completely falls apart. So we have two large brass squares and inside a whole bunch of little brass gears. This is a little mantle clock. I would guess that the hands would be right here because on the back side here we have a beautiful gold plated knob. Well predates batteries and electricity. Uh, so this would have needed to be wound to run. And unfortunately, many of the parts inside are iron. And since you saw it's been sitting in water for probably a hundred years, a lot of it is gone, destroyed, exploded because of the iron expanding. That's pretty cool. When I get home, I will take a look at these plates, see if I can find any manufacturers. That's typically where they were engraved, right on these plates here. But we have a pretty good idea of how old it might be because of when people were here, late 1800s. Most of the inside workings of these mantel clocks were identical. It was the outside wooden case that would have been unique. And I have to imagine, based on the place itself, it was more than likely very beautiful. Pretty cool, old clock. Let's see what else we can find here. Well, there's a lot of iron in here, but every once in a while, this target reads up into the 90s, 88. Let's check it out. Oh, I think I see some of it here. What is this, pipe? Wow, 
Look at that. Wow. This just might be the most intact, most complete tap I think I have ever found. And it appears to be an old one. Back here, which appears to be threads, are actually just grooves because this would have been friction fit into a wooden barrel. This is a barrel tap. You can see here on the end, there's a little thing that pokes out. You can hang a bucket. There's a beautiful handle on top. And I have found basically all of these pieces separately. I have found a bunch of these. We call these keys. I found a couple broken spouts and I have found a bunch of this end too. It makes you wonder how they're breaking. Maybe the bucket gets too heavy, who knows, but this is gonna get a prominent place uh, in my display case. I can get rid of all the broken ones and put this there in place. That is a really, really nice old barrel tap. One of the things that I love about finding everyday objects like this is you can think about how many people grabbed a hold of this and turned it. And what was the dispensing? Maybe water, maybe cider, maybe wine. I suspect they would have reused this once the barrel was empty. They removed it and put in a new one. The parties that were had, the gatherings of people talking about things we probably can't even imagine, right? 1860s, 1880s up here in the mountains. Everyday object, but when you think about the context of who it belonged to and what their lives were like, it's pretty interesting. Nice old barrel tap. That's an exciting find for me. one ornate beautiful suspender so you know i have found quite a few suspenders in my last month or so of videos maybe one or two every single week so far they've all been very utilitarian poor farmers and i suspected when i showed up here that these people may have had some money and this suspender certainly shows that look at how big and beautiful this thing is. We have a design up top. I believe there's some writing right there, which we'll get to in a second. You can see a little gold plating still remaining. And I'm confident that this text will tell us who made it and you know, how old it might be. Let's see here. Well, unfortunately, I cannot make this out right now. And I think maybe because this is backwards and it's actually supposed to be read from the other side, but it's all dirty and I don't want to break this piece. So that'll have to wait until I get home. But this is such a great sign. May not necessarily have dropped any old coins, but they certainly had enough to buy beautiful clothing. Let's keep searching, see what else we can find. 90, 95, 90, that's a good target. Man, I thought that was a little gold coin for a second there. But it is not. It is a little button. Four hole. Interesting. Right up on the other side of the stone wall is the foundation. We've got an 84, nice and solid. I have a pretty good idea of what it's going to be. Let's see. Yep. Exactly. I knew it. A canning jar lid. Uh, the reason I knew it was going to be one is because I have found half a dozen others along this same stone wall. This one is in rather rough shape, but several of the others actually still have the white glass disc inset. Uh, and there would have been a rubber gasket here which would have made the seal the canned goods. Every once in a while they will be writing on the white disc itself. Uh, but on this one, it appears to be on the top of the lid. This is not the one I just found. This is one I found earlier. I believe it says genuine Boyd cap. And there's something down here for something or other. And as I've been digging along this old stone wall, I'm finding fragments of medicine bottle, 
tableware, teacups, all kinds of glass. The end of the 1800s at places like this, all of the trash just went over the closest stone wall. I have found several dumps right on the other side of the stone wall uh, from the home. That was a common thing to do. So maybe we'll have to come back here as a dedicated bottle dig someday soon. Pretty cool. One of these days I'm going to find a canning jar lid with a canning jar still attached, just full of money. And then I'll be able to hang up the metal detector and retire. I think if that happened, I would just want to go more. <laughs> Pretty cool mason jar lid. I'm going to continue along the stone wall. Maybe we will find that jar full of coins. Seventy-eight. Oh. What is this? Well, when I first saw this, I thought I knew what it was. I thought it was maybe another suspender. But the more I looked at it and cleaned it off, I'm not so sure that's what this is. It does seem to have a little hook down here, similar to suspenders. And it is a pressed brass construction, which is how suspenders are made. But this doesn't strike me as a loop that a strap would go through. And it would have to be a very small ring that would snap onto this. Perhaps this went to stockings or a very fancy ladies outfit. I'm not sure, I've never seen anything quite like this. Uh, I have to assume it's similar to a suspender, something clipped onto this. Perhaps this was sewn right into the clothing. You can imagine a very beautiful outfit worn by a lady in the 1880s, more than likely. Not sure. If you have ever seen one of these, or if you metal detect and you've ever found one of these, let me know what you think it is. It doesn't appear there's any writing on this one, so I'm just gonna have to guess. Let me know your thoughts on it. Right, this target is way up there. High 80s, sometimes even the 90s. Wow. What world is this? <laughs> Look at this. What do you think? Handle to a treasure chest? Definitely. Looks like it's in pretty good shape too. Now I would guess that went to a trunk of some kind. You can see that the nails are cinched over. Cool. This is a very loud 80 once again along this old stone wall. Oh, nice. Everybody know what that is? It's a piece of iron, but still an interesting little object here. So this is somewhat of a typical find, metal detecting old places, because typically a long time ago, everybody had at least one horse. And that's what this was used for. If you don't already know, what would you guess? It's totally packed full of mud right now, so it's kind of hard to tell what it is. But this would have had a handle. There are these lines of teeth. Probably can't see them anymore. Some of them still have some teeth. And though it seems very aggressive with these sharp rows of teeth, uh, this was a brush. It's called a curry comb. And it would have been used to, I believe, take off the thick winter coat in the springtime that horses grow. And then shed. This one is real heavy. I'm gonna have to guess 1880s like the rest of the things we've been finding today. Put that back on a wooden handle and put it back to work. They still have curry combs, of course, because horses still shed, and I don't believe they have really changed too much. Old curry comb. Looks like I had a nice little design on the back, too. All right, folks. Well, I'm calling it a day, and you know, despite this place having more structures, I have 
ever seen in one place. The tallest walls I have ever witnessed in the mountains. I didn't actually find any of that wealth I was speculating these folks had. In fact, the targets throughout the day were pretty few and far between. We found a lot of everyday things, horse-related things, but maybe that's why they were wealthy, because they didn't drop any of it into the ground. I've got everything I found today out here on this log. Let's take a look at it. So starting in the back, we have the curry comb, a mantle clock, our treasure chest handle, of course, what I'm calling a saddlebag lid flap. I actually have no idea. Leather covering sheet metal. Let me know what you think about that. What I'm guessing is an escutcheon of some kind. We have one of the many canning jar lids I found. This is just a very high quality brass ring, horse tack I would guess. A shaker lid. I did find one piece of pocket knife, two pieces of oil lamp, a couple spoons, three buttons today, and two of what I'm calling suspender clips, although I am not sure what that is. And what I think might be my favorite find of the day is this totally complete barrel tap. It appears to be quite a bit older than everything else here. It's the most intact I've ever found, so I'm quite excited about that. All right, folks, I wanna thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, finding everyday objects from life in the late 1800s. And hopefully I will see you again next Friday for another new adventure somewhere up here in the mountains of Vermont. Thank you.